If you're from anywhere but the UK, it's highly unlikely you'd have heard of Harry Enfield. Gaining notoriety in the late 1980s with his infamous characters on the Channel 4 show Friday Night Live, then later Saturday Live. With his lifelong friend Paul Whitehouse, he created the character Loads of Money, an obnoxious plasterer who loved to boast about how much money he had, even gaining enough notoriety to warrant a hit single. Well, a single anyway. Another of his more popular characters was Stavros, where Enfield affected a Greek accent and put on brown face. Look, I'm going to tell you once, I'm not going to tell you this again. <laughs> I'm going to do this tonight. I'm going to ask you very polite. Now please, bagger off. Yeah, less said about that one the better. But as deliberately annoying as loads of money was, the character entered the public psyche to such a degree that his name became used as political discourse and was so well loved he was invited to perform at Nelson Mandela's 70th birthday party celebration at Wembley Stadium, introduced by none other than Meatloaf himself. Gentlemen, Harry Enfield, loads of money! Thus, Mr. Renfield was vicariously awarded the status of a national treasure. Advertising contacts came a begging, and another character that shoulder barged his way into the public consciousness was this guy. Did you like the surprising combination of crisp caramel stuff and delicious milk chocolate, smooth on the outside, crunchy on the inside? Nope. Mm. I likes armadillos! <laughs> Smooth on the inside, yeah. crunchy on the outside! Armadillos! Dime, the surprising alternative to armadillos. Two armadillos? You're a bit thick, really, aren't you? Mm. No account of a taste, I know. Not long after this, Harry, along with Paul and Kathy Burke, presented Harry Enfield's television programme, which introduced a whole new litany of memorable characters, a couple of which you've probably seen clipped on Instagram. Yeah, they were going home. Women, know your limits. <laughs> Aside from these, we had the apologetic German tourist. I feel I must apologise for the conduct of my nation in the war. <laughs> the rich couple. My pammy's as pretty as a picture. Oh, Stanley. <laughs> it's true! Tim, nice but dim. Charlie took me along there to <laughs> gulp at some pictures. Uh, as then I saw this fantastically dishy thing across the room. Lady Sophie? No, it's sort of dish, actually. The legendary Smashy and Nicey. Pop Taz McGorical. Uh, that was the Smiths there, uh, and they want to hang the DJ. And you know, uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, <laughs> nice words there, Morrissey, mate. Because if you've been out at a big charity dinner, I think it's megamongously important that you do hang your dinner jacket up. Uh, <laughs> when you get in, so that it doesn't get all sort of wrinkly, and not just a DJ, but also your trousers too. That fantastically sensible tip there, mate. Quite literally, thanks, mate. Wayne and Wayne, that's a slob. What are you doing? I am turning the television off. What? Why? Because every night since we got married, all we've done is watch television. So, tonight, for a change, I thought we'd have it off. I don't want to have it off with you, Wayne Itter. You stink. <laughs> and the Scousers, among others. <laughs> hey, 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 that's my video. Give the fuck. Yeah, but well, that's my big Nintendo. Hey, but that's my CV player. You teeming bastards. Hey, people like you who are giving Scousers a bad name. Comedy anchored on human observation so the audience could relate. One of his characters, however, was way more relatable than others, and his development as the show's progressed was nothing short of genius. In the beginning, he was just billed as an annoying younger brother, who would irritate his older sibling by doing things that annoying younger brothers do. Ah, C.D. Walkman, brilliant! Can I have a go? Can I have a go? Can I have a go? Oh, go on! No. For the record, I was the younger brother, but I was never annoying. Look at that face. But in the first episode of the renamed Harry Enfield and Chums, Something magical happened as the clock struck midnight on his 13th birthday. He's, He's become, become a teenager. teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin! What? And a legend was born. 
Kevin Quentin Julius Patterson entered the public eye and in an instant, thousands of parents were happily nodding along, agreeing with everything on screen and telling their own teenagers that this is exactly how they behaved, usually getting a response exactly as Harry was depicting on screen. Oh, you should watch this, Kevin, it's really funny. Don't dish him or you in trouble, woman. <laughs> it's crap. But it wasn't just Kevin. Added into the mix came Perry, played by Kathy Burt, who displayed just as much acting genius and nuance for five minutes at a time. I rubbed up against Jennifer Fisher and me Brian went hard. Hmm? <laughs> a lot of Harry's characters were by the by easily forgotten, but Kevin and Perry truly gave us some of the funniest TV comedy moments of the 90s. How is your auntie? That has been. I don't know, who cares? You know, the way I look at it, ah, Kev, you know, there's only two types of people, right? There's us and there's wankers. <laughs> it's no surprise that in a poll conducted by Channel 4, Kevin was voted 15th for the top 100 TV characters of all time. And in 2000, Kevin and Perry made their foray onto the big screen in Kevin and Perry Go Large. On paper, it shouldn't have worked. 39-year-old Enfield and 36-year-old Kathy Berg playing teenage boys if it had been out of the blue, maybe not, but because their characters were already so well known and loved and their command of the mannerisms of your average teenager was so spot on, it just does work. The simple story is that our young heroes are desperate to be world famous and cop off with the local fit birds and lose their virginity in the process. Uh. Oh, hi baby. We meet Kevin as he's supposed to be getting nose deep in homework, but his mind is wandering to Dover Castle. And Anne Boleyn is about to get her head chopped off, but in Kevin's imagination, she knows exactly how to get off, so to speak. Please don't execute me. It is such a waste of my lovely woman's body. I've got years of shagging left in me. Why chop off my head when thou could lift up my dress and Look at my f Whoa! I'm not gonna kill you! Well, she is rather forward thinking for a medieval queen. She's even got belly button piercing and everything. Back in the real world, although the duo do show some skills as superstar DJs, their natural awkwardness and Kevin's propensity to brag usually leaves them back where they started. I want a word with you. Oh, hi darling. How's it going? Did you say you shagged me last night? No. Yeah, you bloody did. Stacey heard ya. No, no, I didn't. If only they could somehow go to Ibiza and finally show the world how awesome they can really be. Everyone just gets off with everyone else. It is so horny. Oh, I love her, Kev. Well, that's it. Well, well, we are DJs. Where do DJs go for the summer? Ibiza. Ibiza? Yeah. What, you think you deserve to go to Ibiza after this? And here comes the plot. While attempting to use his father's credit card to get a bunch of cash, they inadvertently thwart a bank robbery. <laughs> and get given a bunch of real cash as a reward. And in gratitude, Kevin's parents allow him to go to Ibiza, with one small caveat. What do you mean, our ticket? Coming too. <gasps> I didn't think we were going to let you go on your own, did you? <laughs> <laughs> that is so unfair! Oh, Stands to reason, they are only supposed to be 16 years old after all, so begrudgingly they accept the offer, with the idea to ditch the old to suck in their land. But when they do, two things happen at once. Firstly, they spot the girls of their dreams, played by Laura Fraser, who you've probably seen in A Knight's Tale and Tabitha Waddy, who you've probably seen in this. And they also ran into superstar DJ Eyeball Paul, played brilliantly by Reese Ephens. The only person on the island is more obnoxious than loads of money. Hi, Eyeball Paul. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> cool, brilliant. So obviously, the pair idolise the hero and follow him around like lost puppies, hoping to get their awesome white label mix played at an Ibiza nightclub and be recognised as the drummer based legends they truly are. Despite the obvious and requisite gross out humour, including vomiting, zip popping, actual remote control turds, it's a floater! It pops to the surface and chases Harry about. <laughs> so we've got that, which is our little hero shark, and a little carrot dorsal fin and sweet corn eyes. 
and then the piece of resistance is the radio controlled turd shark. That one really flies. And old people doing the nasty on the big screen. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Mrs. Peterson, you cheeky girl. Under all that is a genuinely sweet story about love, hope, chasing your dreams and realising who your true friends really are. you just got to, you know, get past all the teenageness. Oh, oh, I can't take any more! I'm adopted! My real parents couldn't possibly treat me like this! I hate you! Mr and Mrs Peterson, um, could I have a James sandwich please?